they've got a lot of trust to build. See, there's, there's FDIC insurance that makes people feel good about putting their money in the bank. And, of course, we've already seen that banks are starting to arbitrarily say, I'm sorry, you can't withdraw that amount of money. Uh, we're going to put a limit on you. You can't take out uh, all of your money at once. Now, these are demand deposits. That's why you <laughs> call them demand deposits. You should be able to get your money out right away. But we've seen some of the bigger banks start to enact what we believe is the beginning of currency control. So there's a lot of risk with that. But in general, people have felt safe because they've had FDIC insurance. There is no insurance in Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a lot of the benefits as well as the risks of cash. You've got the anonymity, and we all like that. You've got the transportability. You can hold it yourself, essentially, if you don't put it in these exchanges that seem to be a bit dodgy. But then you don't have any insurance. So what they've got before them, if they want to keep this cryptocurrency going, and I hope they do, because one of the reasons that we like Stefan Melano and... and um, Ben Swan like this. I like it because the idea of it, because we want to see an alternative currency that can be independent and apart from the manipulations of the central banks. And we want to see something that's going to protect people's privacy. So if we want to see this succeed, what these different Bitcoin people are going to have to do is they're going to have to educate the public. And even though they can't insure these Bitcoins, they're going to have to usher us that they're safe, that there's some way that they have of tracking this. What happened with both Flexcoin and Polynex is not a failure of Bitcoin per se, just like Mt. Gox was not necessarily a failure of Bitcoin. A lot of people are pointing, I don't know the details of that, but in this article, what they pointed out with Flexcoin, for example, was that someone successfully exploited a flaw in the code that would allow transfers between Flexcoin users. See, that's a very different thing than a fundamental flaw in Bitcoin architecture. So what they did was they looked at what was happening within Flexcoin, where people were transferring money back and forth to themselves, and they started moving coins back and forth, exploiting this flaw. Similar thing happened with Polynex. A hacker discovered that if they placed several withdrawals all in practically the same instant, that they would get processed more or less at the same time. Even though they would get a negative balance, the Polynex withdrawal demon was not looking at that negative balance, and so they were able to pull out a lot of coins using that exploit. So that's something you always have to worry about. You always have to worry about as well the fact that it's got a small market cap. When we look at what the government and the central banks have done to manipulate the price of gold, for example, we know that they're manipulating the price of gold. We know that the uh, Hunt brothers manipulated the price of silver, tried to corner that market. We know that George Soros essentially broke the Bank of England. So it's such a small market cap that you could have one rogue billionaire like a George Soros that could play games with the value of Bitcoin. We also know that we've got an agency like the NSA that loves to break codes. They live for that. <laughs> They're very, very good at it. And as William Benny said when I was talking to him about secure email, about Bitcoin, he said there's no code that we can't break. It's just a matter of time. And, of course, people will respond to their code breaking with other codes. So, as he pointed out, it's a back and forth game, but it's constantly evolving. There isn't any code that they can't break. And so now with this story that we have today, we see that the alleged Bitcoin founder, his name is Satoshi Nakamoto, did classified work for the U.S. military. So this raises some interesting questions. He said when he was caught by Newsweek, he said, I'm no longer involved in that and I cannot discuss it. It's been turned over to other people. They're now in charge of it, and I no longer have any connection. But then later, he said, told the Associated Press, it sounded like I was involved before Bitcoin and looks like I'm not involved now. That's not what I meant. I want to clarify that. Well, he didn't really clarify it, but his brother said that, uh, said of him, my brother is an a-hole. What you don't know about him is that he's working on classified stuff. His life was a complete blank for a while. You're not going to be able to get to him. He'll deny everything. He'll never admit to starting Bitcoin. And he did classified work for major corporations and the U.S. military, according to this report from Newsweek. And so the question that some people are asking is, is he working for the government? Did they create Bitcoin as some kind of a backdoor uh, way to, to, to grab people, to try to push people to a digital currency? I don't know. What I do know is that DARPA started the Internet. And even though DARPA started the internet, we could take it in our own direction. And it's a constant fight. Just like William Benny said, you're never there. You constantly have to fight for your freedom. 
You constantly have to fight the information war. We'll be right back with more breaking news. Stay tuned. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. The ultimate survival bug out lightweight fishing pole is Emrod. Made by a family owned American company and assembled in Idaho, Emrod fishing gear comes with a lifetime warranty and 90 day money back guarantee. Emrod weighs just 8 ounces and breaks down to 14 inches. Emrod's indestructible stainless steel compact design makes it perfect to take anywhere. Cast your eyes now at Emrod.com. That's E M M R O D.com. Emrod. Fish to survive, survive to fish. We the people grow cotton, we fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. We are not here to scare you or fill your mind with images of terror. There's enough of that already. We are survivalbagsinc.com, a veteran-owned company. We specialize in survival supplies, bags, and packs. In most cases, our survival bags, loaded with emergency food, water, and supplies, ship out in 24 hours or less, and prices start as low as 60 bucks. Go to survivalbagsinc.com, and thank you for supporting a veteran-owned American business. Survivalbagsinc.com. Our mission is to help you survive. What's making Americans sick and fat? It's too many GMO foods and toxins destroying our digestive systems, causing poor digestion and suppressed immune systems. A suppressed immune system prevents clear thinking and the ability to fight the corporate and big pharma agendas. Detox now with Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 liquid probiotic is wheat, dairy, and soy-free, gluten-free, and made with all non-GMO certified organic ingredients. Pro-EM1's power is based in good bacteria, live microbes, and all their metabolites, including vitamins, amino acids, and enzymes that support a healthy digestive system, suppress pathogens, and eliminate toxins. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 daily probiotic cleanse at terraganics.com. Spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. <laughs> Stand up for your rights. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex Jones at Alex Stand Jones Show. And we're going to have Alex in the second hour with a set-down interview with Tucker Carlson that we filmed earlier. This is a first time, never before seen. I haven't even seen it. And it's uh, going to be between Alex Jones and the founder of The Daily Caller, Tucker Carlson. And they're going to cover a wide variety of political and liberty issues. So don't miss that. And, of course, coming up in the next segment, we're going to have John Bowne's special report about Democrats and the Ku Klux Klan. 
as part of Alex and Tucker Carlson's initial interview here in the studio. The subject of how the Democrats race bait and subdivide the population into competing groups came up. And so Alex pointed out that the Democrats have had a very, very long association with the Ku Klux Klan. And of course, mainstream media could not believe that. Came up and ridiculed that. Oh, really? Well, you know what? John just came in and told me, he said, there are so many connections. He didn't have time for all of them in the 10 minute report, but it's a, it's a great report. So you're gonna wanna see that. That's gonna be in the next, or listen to that if you're listening on the radio, it's a good radio report. We're going to have that in the next segment, but let's take a look at some of the news today. We've got Russia reportedly halting all exports to the U.S. of Russian-made ammunition. Now, this is a big deal because, remember, as we had the ammunition shortages because the massive purchases of Homeland Security and other government agencies, we had massive shortages. That was alleviated somewhat by the importation of Russian arms, and now because of the new buildup in the Cold War, this tension as Obama is threatening to put embargoes against Russia, Russia says, I see your bluff and I'm going to raise the ante in the poker game, and so it just keeps getting worse and worse. Now we see that this is another aspect. As they're pointing out, this one person reported and said, the largest wholesale gun and ammo distributors in the U.S. have informed us in a private conversation today that a massive scramble is on for all 7.62 as Russia has reportedly halted all exports to the U.S. of Russian-made ammunition. And they say that just in the last 10 hours, they sold out of every last round they had. Now, that report is up on Infowars.com from uh, Max Slavo. And uh, we also have Obama, if you remember, yesterday, he put an embargo on Critics. So he's going to not only stop the flow of goods to Russia, he thinks, but he's also going to stop any criticisms from flowing into the United States, or at least the critics from coming into the United States. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that he's got his uh, pen and he's just going to, by edict, say that if you disagree with his characterization of a foreign conflict, you're not going to be allowed in the United States? Why is Obama taking it so personally? This is something that's happening in a foreign country. Can't people have an opinion about that? I mean, we, we're supposed to have free speech, free thought here in the United States. But the fact that he cracks down on this so heavily tells you, doesn't it, that he is involved with the architects of this crisis that is being perpetrated right on the steps of Russia. And if that weren't enough, we have news from CPAC. We see speeches coming out. Of course, Ted Cruz has spoken there. Marco Rubio has spoken there. John Bolton has spoken there. Bolton is just decrying the isolationism of America. <laughs> Can you believe that? The isolationism? We're trying to start wars everywhere. Obama goes from one attempted war and to, to try in Syria to trying to start a war now with Russia, at least to restart the Cold War between Russia and the West, trying to start an economic trade war. You got John Boehner saying, it's okay if if Gazprom shuts off natural gas to Europe, we'll supply them with some natural gas. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's exactly what they would like to do. Maybe Department of Homeland Security loves the idea that Russia is not going to be selling ammunition to the United States. Maybe Boehner and his allies would love to sell gas and oil to Europe instead of having them buy it from the Russians. Maybe the banker that got put in as prime minister of the new Ukrainian democracy the post-coup democracy that they've got there, if you could call it that. They haven't had an election, so I don't know if you could call it a democracy. But that former banker says that he would like to put uh, the pipelines on the auction block, the Gazprom pi pipeline. So I think there's a profit motive going on here, just as there is in every war. In every war, they want to make money for the military-industrial complex, the people that make the weapons. And of course, it's been a long time since the Cold War segment of the military industrial complex has been able to do that. I'm sure they would love to have that profit center restarted. They've of course got the new profit center of militarizing the police in America and creating a police state and they can provide all the over the top expensive Pentagon style overkill like these armored tanks that they're giving to police departments and the police come out and say, yeah, we, we love having this because nobody's going to ever consider challenging us with these. It's just all about intimidation and it's all about profiteering. And they've got that profit center, but they want to restart the Cold War because that'll give them a whole new excuse for a lot of new types of weapons. And I guess if they cut off the gas to Europe, 
you could say that's a real Cold War, isn't it? But we're going to be right back. We're going to have some more news, and we're going to have John Bounds' report on the Democrats and the KKK. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're on the...